Welcome back to Fashion Tours. It's time for my power rankings for the 2024 uh, Mexican Grand Prix. Pretty, pretty chaotic race, a uh, lot of drama, quite a bit of contact between different drivers. So, should make for pretty interesting power rankings. Uh, and I think also, you know, definitely some, some. I think I have some spots on my power rankings. I think some people will definitely debate. But I think one spot that is not going to be up for much debate is who's going to be in last. Uh, and that is going to be the driver who qualified, uh, let's see, qualified 18th on the grid and finished in 17th, being out qualified by their teammate uh, by 8 tenths of a second, got involved in at least one incident and ended up a lap down. And that is Sergio Perez. Pretty awful home Grand Prix for uh, Checo. Qualifying was pretty poor. Obviously, in the race, had that false start. So even though he had a great start, the fact that he basically just got a five second penalty uh, right, right from the get go definitely did not help matters. Uh, first couple laps were pretty good for Perez, but then of course ran into Liam Lawson. Probably should have had an easier time overtaking the Kiwi, but did uh, end up with uh, damage after contact with Lawson. Uh, and yeah, so really not a great Grand Prix from there. Made the fastest lap attempt at the end, but uh, to no avail. So for Perez, really rough, rough home Grand Prix. And, you know, get, just because how, of how many things went wrong in both qualifying and in the race, uh, I have to put Paris in 20th. So, uh, number 19, it's a bit, of, a bit of a tough one after that. So I think number 19, I'm actually going to go with uh, Yuki Tsunoda. Uh, another tough weekend for the second weekend in a row. Uh, qualifying, depending on how you look at it, went okay. Uh, Out-qualified his teammate Liam Lawson by about uh, just under a tenth of a second, qualified in 11. But of course, everyone will remember the fact that he basically ended qualifying uh, Q2 prematurely when he had a bit of a clumsy crash uh, going into the final, into the stadium section. Then uh, crashed out on the front, uh, opening lap at the first corner. Uh, don't think he was entirely to blame for that. And given that there was no penalties really handed out, that really suggests that for all the drivers involved, I think all of them have some blame. And that definitely I think is reflected in where some of the other drivers in that involved in that crash end up. Uh, but for Sonata, crashing and qualifying, crashing on the opening lap, not really a whole lot of other data to really base my ranking on, so I decided to put uh, Sonata in 19th. Uh, number 18, a driver who, who arguably had uh, his worst Grand Prix in his career, in his still pretty short career, and that is uh, Oscar Piastri. So for Piastri, qualified 17th, uh, out-qualified by uh, Lando Norris by over a second, uh, definitely a much bigger gap than we're used to seeing from Piastri. Honestly, the first two-thirds, 75% of the season, uh, Piastri was within a tenth of Norris easily. But the last couple weekends, things have just started to kind of fall away from him. Not sure what exactly what it is. Uh, he did was able to make somewhat of a recovery drive, recovered to eighth, so still not able to clear all of the midfield. Uh, one driver in the midfield who was ahead of him. Uh, so probably a little bit below expectations, especially given how strong uh, the other McLaren's pace was uh, later in the Grand Prix. So really rough Grand Prix for Piastri, so I put him in 18th. Uh, number 17, driver who didn't really do a whole lot this weekend, but unfortunately just given how slow their car is, there isn't really much uh, that much higher I can put them, and that is Zhou Guangyu. So for Zhou, uh, out-qualified by Bottas by uh, about six and a half tenths of a second. Uh, let's see, yeah, six and a half tenths, yeah, six and a half tenths. Uh, so qualifying not, not optimal, qualified dead last, as has happened quite often this year. Uh, and then in the Grand Prix, moved up to 15th, uh, but still behind his teammates, so not a great Grand Prix all around for Zhou. Uh, number 16, I'm going to go with uh, Esteban Ocon. Uh, for Ocon, originally qualified in 19th, out qualified by, what is the number? About four and a half tenths of a second uh, by his teammate Pierre Gasly. So qualifying not great again for the second weekend in a row. Uh, in the Grand Prix, did move, move, move up some positions, ended up finishing the race in 13th. But again, given the pace of the Alpine, given where his teammate uh, finished, uh, definitely not a great weekend for Ocon. Uh, now moving into the, the third row, uh, number 15, I've decided to put uh, Alex Albon. So for Albon, uh, qualifying went pretty well. Uh, Elk qualified his teammate, Franco Colapinto, by about three and a half tenths of a second, got himself into Q3, qualified P9, which I think is a pretty good spot for uh, where the Williams is right now. 
but unfortunately was involved in that first corner accident with Sonoda uh, and was basically out of the Grand Prix after that. Uh, I, the reason I put him quite a few positions ahead of Sonoda is that qualifying went quite a bit better for L1 than it did for Sonoda and of course uh, L1 didn't crash out of qualifying uh, like uh, Sonoda did. Moving into next, now this one may be a bit of a controversial one but I'm actually going to put Liam Lawson in 14th. Qualifying, I think, on the whole was not great, but it wasn't terrible either. Of course, out qualified by his teammate Sonoda. Uh, you know, if both drivers get their final run in Q2 in, maybe Lawson ends up qual out qualifying Sonoda, but on the contrary, maybe it's the other way around as well. So again, not really a plus, not really a negative either. Uh, in the Grand Prix, uh, moved up. Actually, no, he didn't move up. He basically stayed on the hard. He was on the alternative strategy, went on the hards early and switched to the medium tires afterwards. The pace on the medium tires after he pitted was not particularly strong. Uh, and he, for example, Colo Pinto, who started behind him, ended up ahead of him uh, at the end on the same strategy. Of course, he had uh, damage from his front wing. I think it was a little bit of an aggressive, maybe too aggressive from Lawson there. Um, of course, he did have the battle with Perez, which I think the defending was pretty good from him. Uh, although Perez would definitely disagree with that. Uh, but I think on the whole, I think between the incident with Colo Pinto, which I think was really maybe a little bit too aggressive on Lawson's side, plus the fact that I think the race pace was not that good in the second part of the race is why I decided to put him in 14th. Now moving on to uh, moving on to uh, 13th, uh, 12th and 13th, the reason I'm talking about these two together uh, is because uh, these are teammates. So number 13 I'm going to put Lance Stroll and number 12 I'm going to put uh, Fernando Alonso. Uh, yeah, just having them next to, next to each other, so I'm just gonna talk about them together. So Alonso out-qualified Stroll by uh, just over a tenth of a second, but of course uh, retired pretty early in the Grand Prix with some kind of mechanical issue, so definitely not the way that you'd want to end uh, your 400th uh, F1 Grand Prix. For Stroll, yeah, out-qualified by Alonso, but I thought I had a pretty good uh, Grand Prix, finished in 11th place. Uh, race pace second stint of the race was quite strong, about the same as Gasly. And, you know, maybe I think the Alpine was a bit of a bit quicker car uh, in in this weekend. So I think all around uh, decent pace from Stroll. But again, I can't, I don't really have any reason to put him ahead of Alonso, given that Alonso retired uh, with a mechanical issue and it wasn't some kind of accident of his own making. Now, number 11 is probably going to be the most controversial pick on the board. I think many people, you know, if people create their own power ranking, some people would probably have this driver somewhere in this region. Um, but I'm actually going to put Max Verstappen in 11th. Now, uh, my justification for putting Max Verstappen in 11th and not, you know, down here with Piastri, Sonoda, and Perez is that I think uh, one, Verstappen got, really got the most out of the car in qualifying. Qualifying on the front row uh, really got the most of it out of the package in qualifying. Good start uh, up into the lead of the race after the first corners, and it was pretty clear though that. Verstappen didn't have the pace whatsoever uh, to basically hold on to the lead of the race after he got easily overtaken by Sainz. And then of course you had the two incidents with Norris. Now, depending on how you look at this, you can either say that Max Verstappen was driving incredibly dangerously and that he shouldn't be do that, doing that. He, should, he was making mistakes. And of course he then was given a 20, two, two 10 second penalties, so 20 seconds in penalties total. I think the counter argument to that is that Max Verstappen deliberately knew what he was doing. Yes, it was perhaps over the line, perhaps it was dangerous, uh, but Verstappen, I think in his mind, his calculation was the fact that he was either, if he doesn't do any of those moves, he probably ends up fourth, Norris perhaps wins the Grand Prix given how strong his pace was at the end, or he gets the time penalty, ends up sixth, Norris ends up second, and he actually has less, he loses less points to Norris that way than if he had finished fourth and uh, Norris wins the Grand Prix. So it's one of those things where I think Verstappen knew what he was doing. He deliberately was trying to hinder Norris's race as much as possible, given that Norris is the closest driver in the championship to him. Uh, and I think he kind of did those actions deliberately. Was that a good idea? Not so sure. The first one I think was definitely on the edge probably could have not been a penalty, could have not been a penalty, but it really felt like after the fallout of last weekend's Grand Prix, 
Uh, it really felt like the stewards, like I said in my review earlier, the stewards were looking for their first opportunity to give Verstappen a penalty after that Grand Prix. The turnout eight one I think was definitely a lot more deliberate. Um, but you know, after those two incidents, uh, gets those penalties, uh, pretty good recovery drive back up to sixth place. Wasn't really ever ever wanting it going to get past uh, the Mercedes. I thought. And honestly, uh, Magnussen has actually had stronger pace from than him. So, depending on how you look at it, I think you know I've definitely docked Verstappen quite a bit for the two incidents uh, against uh, the two incidents with Norris. So that's why you know he's not in the top two rows. Uh, but that being said, I do think there are other factors as well that uh, prevent him from being in the bottom row. All right, moving into the top ten, number ten, uh, I'm going to put. Uh, Franco Colapinto. So for Colapinto, uh, qualifying wasn't super strong this weekend. Uh, he qualified 16th, out qualified by three and a half, uh, three and a half tens. In the race, was a bit bit stronger. Uh, he had a really good pace in the second half of the second half of the race. Got past Albon. Uh, I think the 10 second penalty was a little bit unfair, but luckily for him, because of where he was and where the lap traffic was, uh, didn't actually end up. Uh, affecting his finishing final finishing position, which was 12th. So not a not a bad Grand Prix I felt from Colapinto. Uh, number nine, I'm gonna go with Valtteri Bottas. Uh, for Bottas, I felt he had a really strong Grand Prix, uh, based based on you know what we can generally expect uh, as kind of the standard weekend for the Sauber. So for Bottas, he qualified Joe by six and a half tenths. Uh, qualified in P15, so got himself up to Q3 for the first time in quite a while. Unfortunately, the car doesn't really have the pace, so in the race, he did drop back he, uh, relative to his competitors, but he did still end up finishing 14th. But unfortunately for Bottas, still no points and still dead last in the championship. Uh, P8 in my power rankings, I'm going to put Nico Hulkenberg. So for Hulkenberg, good weekend i guess in the sense that he'd get some points but definitely uh i felt he was overshadowed by his teammate and again your teammate is always the driver that you want to beat the most uh so that's kind of why i don't have hulkenberg a bit higher up uh but for hulkenberg uh let's see uh ill qualified by his teammate by four and a half tenths which is definitely rare uh that that he's one ill qualified and, Ill, and two ill qualified by that margin uh and then in the race uh improved to ninth place but still uh I think definitely. I don't think he made the most of what the Haas was capable of today, given what we saw from his teammate. Uh, number seven, I'm going to go with Pierre Gasly. Uh, for Gasly, qualified in tenth. Uh, Ill qualified his teammate Ocon by four and a half tenths, and then the Grand Prix finished in uh, tenth. So a really uh, good, really good drive for Gasly, and gets a point for his efforts. Uh, number six, I'm going to go with. Uh, George Russell. For so Russell, qualifying went pretty well. Uh, Ill qualified his teammate Lewis Hamilton by almost three tenths of a second. Uh, finished fifth in the Grand Prix, uh, overtaken by his teammate. I think honestly, him and his teammate, who by the way, spoiler alert, I have him fifth. Very very close. And I think you know Russell. It looks like had some kind of damage. Not sure where he picked that up, but really I think you can interchange the two Mercedes drivers. Uh, I think just I think Hamilton had a little bit of a stronger race, which is why. I put him in fifth. Uh, number four, so moving into the top four, number four, I'm gonna actually put uh, Charles Leclerc. So for Leclerc, I thought he had a good weekend, but again, kind of a similar situation to Hulkenberg where it really felt like even though it was a good weekend in terms of results, uh, given what we saw from his teammate, uh, we know that there was definitely more there. So for Leclerc, uh, he qualified fourth, out qualified by his teammate Sainz by about three tenths of a second. Uh, ended up finishing third in the Grand Prix, kind of capitalized on kind of the kerfuffle between Verstappen and Norris in the opening laps. Uh, but of course made that mistake, had that massive snap of oversteer. I mean, sometimes with those kinds of things, it's not really a mistake. Sometimes the car can just be quite unpredictable, like it can be a snap of wind, like a gust of wind or something. Uh, but had that snap of oversteer and lost that position Norris, he was probably going to lose it anyway. Uh, but yeah, so for Leclerc, I've decided to put him in fourth. Uh, so moving into the top three, number three, I'm going to go with Lando Norris. So for Norris, the reason I don't have him second is I really felt like he didn't really get the most out of the car in qualifying. And I think he probably could have done a little bit more in the first half of the race. So qualifying, while well, the gap to his teammate Cashew was really good, uh, out-qualified his teammate by a second. Uh, 
he, I, it really felt like so Q1, Q2, he had, he looked like the pace setter in qualifying, but Q3 it did feel like he left a little bit of time on the board. Into the opening laps of the Grand Prix, obviously had to kind of deal with the fact that it was battling Verstappen, uh, and Verstappen was battling quite aggressively, uh, to put it to put it mildly. Uh, but that being said, I do think that there was a little bit more pace in hand for the McLaren. Uh, that being said, second half of the Grand Prix was excellent and it was uh, much faster than Leclerc and was chasing, uh, catching signs uh, quite rapidly towards the end of the Grand Prix as well. All right, so into the top two we go. And number two, his highest spot ever on my power rankings is Kevin Magnussen. Excellent weekend for the Danish driver. Best of the rest in qualifying, P7. Uh, Ill qualified his teammate by four and a half tens. Best of the rest in the race, P7. Uh, and was actually catching... Uh, Verstappen, uh, Verstappen P6, and was basically almost matching the two Mercedes as well. So really, really good weekend from Hulkenberg, and he's had basically his best weekend of the year, uh, quite late in the year, so it's kind of a shame that, you know, he's basically lost his seat, he doesn't really have any chance of getting the remaining Sauber seat. Um, so, but I guess, you know, sometimes we do see these kinds of performances in F1, uh, you know, when drivers know they're out of the series at the end of the year, uh, the pressure's kind of off. I remember with Vettel in 2022, uh, it really felt like after he announced his retirement, his results actually improved and he, I think he was a lot more relaxed. Uh, so it might be a similar situation with Magnussen where he knows he can just kind of relax and enjoy his last several races in F1. And number one is, of course, your race winner, Carlos Sainz. Uh, started from pole position, a very, very strong pole position. It was beating his teammate by uh, three tenths of a second. And then just really control things in the Grand Prix. And after he re overtook uh, Verstappen uh, early in the race, it really felt like he had that entire race under control. It was a little bit of pressure at the end from uh, Norris as he was catching him quite quickly, but it never really looked like it was ever going to be a serious challenge. So, really, really excellent uh, weekend for Signs. Uh, really showing, you know, I think what I think F1 will kind of be losing in the sense that, you know, Signs will, will in all likelihood not be driving at the front, the front of the grid next year but there you go uh there's my power rankings for the 2024 uh mexican grand prix uh let me know your thoughts in the comment section below uh are there any drivers who you thought i think are too high are others any other any who you think are too low anyway thank you so much for watching goodbye